Early Monday morning, the FDIC seized the banking assets of First Republic Bank, then sold them to financial giant J.P. Morgan Chase. Under the deal, First Republic customers are now J.P. Morgan customers, and people will have access to all of their money. But customers have been advised to keep using their First Republic branch rather than Chase Banks until the two systems have merged. First Republic is the second largest U.S. financial institution to fail. We have to make sure that we're not back in this position again. And I think we're well on our way to be able to make that assurance. President Biden today repeating his calls for Congress to strengthen regulations and supervision of large and regional banks. Biden also insisting this is no bailout, despite the FDIC providing J.P. Morgan with $50 billion in financing. Well, let me be very clear. While depositors are being protected, shareholders are losing their investments. And critically, taxpayers are not the ones that are on the hook. First Republic has been on the brink of collapse for weeks following the failures of Silicon Valley and Signature Banks in March. First Republic stock took a nosedive last week after the bank reported customers withdrew more than $100 billion. Based on our analysis of the banking industry, um, this was the last of the ones that um, should face significant challenges. Financial analysts say the most important takeaway is no depositors lost money during the seizure and sale. In a call with analysts Monday, J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon predicted the market crisis surrounding banks is over, though he believes there will be other cracks in the system caused in part by the Federal Reserve's effort to reduce inflation by raising interest rates. The Fed is meeting again this week, and market analysts do expect them to once again hike interest rates to combat inflation. Lindsay Watts, ABC News, Washington.